Here we are. Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to the APH Virtual Excel Academy. This is College Prep how to determine if you are really ready. And this is part two of a three-part series. We are so excited to have Leslie Thatcher with us today. She will be our presenter. We really encourage you to uh, raise your hand and ask questions as often as you can. And I'm gonna go ahead and turn this right over to Leslie. So it's all yours. Thanks for joining us today, Leslie. Awesome. Thanks so much for your help in setting this up, Scott. You're welcome. Um, hi, Donnie, there in the chat. Um, I'm delighted to be back here. I have a very robust agenda for us today, folks. So I am going to do my best to keep at a pace that is reasonable but enthusiastic. Um, and I hope that I will have a chance to respond to questions that you all have, ideas that you may have. Um, and so I'll be responding. If you type a comment in the chat, um, I can see what your thoughts are. And either if you want to ask a question out loud, we can do that. And Scott will help us unmute you. Um, or you can type your question in the chat and I can see um, what you've written and respond to it as I'm talking. Um, it seemed to work well last time. And I think it's really great to hear the ideas that you all have and um, the questions that you have, because it helps me understand um, what's meaningful to you guys. So um, without further ado, I'm gonna dive into this um, little project we've got going here. This is college prep lesson two. And um, again, I'm Leslie Thatcher. Um, and I, oops, I've got to get my cursor on the right screen here. Um, I'm here to talk about college prep Today's match is, a, is about college match. And so uh, what does that mean exactly? We're gonna kind of explore, but I wanted to review to get all of our heads in this game a little more, um, in a little more focused way. I wanna explore um, some of our learning objectives today. Um, that is to help you all learn about today's college environment, not the environment your mom and dad experienced or your grandma and grandpa, experienced, but the one that's going on now in 2022 and beyond. Um, it's dynamic, it's changing, and there's a lot of opportunity for a huge range of folks out there to have experience in higher education in a lot of different ways. And we'll talk about that today. We want to help you understand more about college demands and how you, with your current skill set, may match up to those academic demands and blindness skills demands. Um, we'll talk about that a little bit today and a, quite a bit more in our third session. We're going to talk more about the college search, the application process and timelines. I could spend three whole sessions just talking about that. So it's going to be really top, high level stuff. Um, and we're going to explore what college is. We did a little bit of that in our last session and what college is not. Um, again, we did a little bit of that in our last session. We will do more as time goes on. Um, we're going to pause for a moment and I want you to really look almost inward right now. And I want you to think about college really through your own lens. Um, some questions that help you do that are things like, well, where am I now in high school? What do I think about school? Where do I want to be in the future? What would that, what would that look like and feel like for me? And then how do we connect those dots? How do we get there? How do we gain the skills, the academic knowledge, um, the typing speed, the confidence, whatever these things are that you particularly need, how are you gonna get there? And then what resources will I need, both materials and your own skill set to get to those goals? Um, so I want you to think about realistically what some of those answers might be. It's not your mom and dad's college experience, although they're definitely, or your other family member who's supporting you, a part of that. Uh, it's not your TBI's experience, it's not your history teacher's experience, this is your journey. Um, and I really want it to begin to live right inside you and in your interests, your wants, your desires um, for what your future might look like and feel like. All right. 
And the bottom line, um, my slide says, it's okay not to know all the answers right now, um, but it's okay to begin to ask these questions. All right. So moving on, let me check my chat. Okay, it's, it's chill right now. So I wanna do a quick review of lesson one. Um, as some of you may recall, if you participated in lesson one, um, we reviewed the benefits of a college degree. We asked you to begin to consider why you wanna go to college. Is it because your older sister went to college? Is it because you've heard all the buzz about how cool college is, but no one you know has gone, but it seems like an easy answer when people ask you, well, what are you gonna do after high school? Or it could be something else. Um, it could be that you know that you want to become a counseling psychologist and help people work on mental health challenges. I don't know, um, but these are questions to begin to answer. And we began to explore that last time. Um, we also began to explore different types of colleges out there in the world. And there's a lot of different ones. I think um, everyone can agree. And knowing the options out there is going to help you make a better informed decision about college search and about your college match. And that's what kind of today is about. So I'm going to move to our next one. Today, we're going to explore a little bit about the admissions process. We're going to explore how you might make your college match, whether it's the community college in your hometown or region, or a you know, little liberal arts college across the country. What is the process to identifying that match? The questions are the same. Explore how you might determine if you're ready for college. That'll plant some seeds for our next session. And I'm going to introduce you to the basics of the difference between high school and college, including some of the ideas behind the IDEA and the ADA. And if you don't know what those are, you should not take the time right now to Google them. I'm just here to tell you, because we're gonna move fast through our lesson and you can look it up afterwards. Um, I'm gonna, we're gonna send you as part of the homework um, a couple really great articles to introduce that to you. So without further ado, we're gonna move on. So college match, I'm gonna pause here and I want some buzz in this chat because it's a little quiet, although ooh, there's five comments in there now. Okay. Um, okay. Um, so I want you guys to think about what you think I mean by college match. We've explored a lot of different kinds of college and today's session is all about making that college match. So what do you think that might be? Um, and you can type your notes in the chat um, or you can say, I wanna speak, I have an idea. Um, <laughs> Donnie's saying college, oh, I know what you're saying, Donnie. <laughs> We're not gonna talk about that. All right, who's next? Any other Any. thoughts? Anyone want to raise their hand? Um, Huston has, did I Houston, say your name? Houston, actually. Houston, okay, sorry. I knew it was specific. Houston, what um, are your- I think it's like, um, I, I think based on like, if I already, well, I mean, so I'm, I mean, I can use context clues. So I'm based <laughs> on at, when I was using context clues, I thought Ooh, maybe the college match is like, picking what college is right for you based on like Audio now and your strengths and your weaknesses like kind of thing strengths and weaknesses okay and like Thank and like what you yeah. can do and like how you are doing like academically okay. and all that stuff do everyone pull in okay what college you're ready so, for or matching very like, good like, like basically like like basically like picking like what college is right for you basically what college is right for you okay and maybe we'll get a little more specific in that as we talk today but that that yeah, basically that's that's part of it for sure. Alexis is saying picking out the college you're ready for and and matching them or matching them with each other. Okay. And I saw someone named Isabel had her hand up. Yes, that was me. Isabel. What are your so, thoughts? So what do you do at a tribal college? Oh, um, so it typically is designed for folks who are members of a particular tribe or part of a particular um, 
Indian nation, native nation that um, has very specific um, universities and colleges designed for the cultural desires and, and um, traditions of that region. It's, wow. and so it's, again, it's, it's about match, right? Yeah. And they're creating an educational option that their community is asking for the thing they need. Ah. Yeah. So good question. Um, so we are, you know, I think you guys have kind of begun to explore some of the ideas that go into college match. Are you ready for it? Um, I have a, a list on the slide that I have um, on my presentation and I'm gonna read it out to you so we can kind of plant some of these words and ideas in our brains to kind of think a little more about. I want us to think about um, location. You know, is it nearby? Is it 3000 miles away? Um, how big or small is it? A small college is about 2000. Sometimes there's some smaller colleges, but 2000 students is small. Um, large is the University of Minnesota has 50,000 students. That is enormous. Five times the size of my town here. Um, the type of college, we explored liberal arts colleges. We explored large universities last time. We explore, and I have a slide reminding us of the types of college in a few slides. Expenses, thank you, Lindsay, very much so. The culture of the college, is it, um, is it a college that is known for um, Big Ten athletics, like Notre Dame has a classic, a big um, Catholic tradition and a huge athletic tradition. And if you like that stuff, that might be a, a good match culturally for you. Um, there are some colleges that have a very strong, um, very social Greek, Greek life that drives lots of social engagement and experiences. and. Um, that may be meaningful to you. Others have a very um, um, great books um, approach, which uses a, a series of great books. This is St. John's College as their form of study. And that's what everybody studies. And so uh, Colorado College in a liberal arts college in Colorado's, um, Colorado Springs is on a block system. And you take only one class at a time. And every, I think, four weeks, you change classes. How cool would that be? So, you know, the culture of the college is different areas of study. If you're interested in hospitality or event planning as an area of interest, and you're looking at colleges that do not offer that, okay, well, better that may me. not be a, a big match. college. They have one in Colorado Springs. <laughs> Say that again, Faith. What was that, Faith? Hello. Hi. Did you oh, say no. something? No, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to raise my hand. Oh no. Um, um, no, it's fine. Um, and Faith, I am gonna answer your question about how do I know the best college for my vision loss? We're gonna talk about that. And I have an article I'm about to post about that exact thing. So um, so um other things to consider as someone said in the chat are things like affordability, um, which again could be another three series, three session series. Campus layout, is it a campus with um, a layout that works with your o &M skills and comfort level? Um, or is it one that is um, super complex and not obvious and in the middle of a city and you've never lived in a city? Would that be a good match for you? I don't know, everybody's gonna be different. Um, access, transportation options, these are all things to consider as you consider the best college match for you. On the subject of the best college for me as a blind student, all of these other elements may make the best college for you, Faith, as a blind student, but maybe not a good college for another student who's a good blind, uh, a blind student. Um, it, it, it's a mix of all of the different elements. There isn't one best college for kids with visual impairments. Um, it's, it's a combination of a number of factors. And that's why I'm really taking time to introduce you guys to, you gotta think about a lot of things and it could be very exciting for you to learn about your responses to these things. 
how do I feel about a big college versus a small college? Do I like the idea of the liberal arts versus a um, large university system where I might be more focused in one area of study and so on? I go on and on. I'm going to control myself and focus, okay? Um, and Leslie? Real quick, there. Yeah. Um, Lisa Lloyd has had her hand up for a few minutes, oh, and just wondering if she still wanted to ask a question. Thank you so much, Scott. Lisa, You're are you still there, Lisa? <laughs> yeah, I'm still here. I'm sorry. Awesome. What was the name of the college that you mentioned where you can study one uh, class at a time? I've never heard of this. Oh yeah, it's called. It's a block plan. Is the type of. Um, design to the the curriculum that they have it's called colorado college in colorado springs colorado it's a okay, small liberal arts college and it's 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 a super awesome place um in a small city just south of denver okay thank you yeah you're welcome um so we've talked about types of colleges admissions um we'll talk about admissions considerations in just a minute other characteristics i've just gone through a little bit and then certainly a question to ask and to begin to prepare for is, what is the disability service offices experience working with students with vision loss? Um, if you've worked, if we have a saying in our field, if you've worked with one student with vision loss, you've worked with one student with vision loss. Each one of you brings a unique set of experiences, um, uh, skill sets, areas of interest, one student with vision loss interested in chemistry is going to need a different set of services and skills and um, support than a student who is um, undecided as a major and um, really scraped through algebra two and really would prefer never to touch math again, um, right? Those are two different students with a different range of interests and skills and experience. The disability service office would need to have a very different kind of stretch with one than the other. Um, so that is no problem. Chat is good. Um, <laughs> um, okay, so I think I've got everyone moving forward here. We're going to move on. A quick reminder of the types of colleges generally that are out there. Community colleges, those are local colleges that are offer two-year associate's degree programs. They're typically very affordable. Um, state commissions for the blind often support the full tuition there. Um, they're designed to support students who are transitioning and growing their academic skills. Um, there are many programs designed um, to support students who might be first generation college attendees um, with a wide range of supports um, that meet their unique needs um, and so on. I'm a huge fan of community colleges. I know there's some social negative um, uh, feelings about community colleges, but there's a lot of pros to them. Um, and I don't want you to dismiss them as a stepping stone to a four-year college if that's the right path for you. With four-year colleges, there's a wide range of colleges that only offer bachelor's programs and others that offers master's programs, certificates, large state colleges and universities, private state colleges and universities, liberal arts colleges. These are all ones that provide bachelor's programs and often more um, advanced degrees as well. There's comprehensive universities like my University of Minnesota uh, example that is a ginormous state university um, in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Um, I this class going well. Everything. Everything under the sun. Robin, did you have something to contribute? Uh, oh, 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 no, sorry. It's okay. <laughs> she went off mute. Okay. Um, and then special programs that I, I mentioned last time, things like Think College for Students with Intellectual Disabilities, um, programs like Mitchell College that have supportive um, try on college for size type experiences called the Thames program that are very supportive. Mansfield Hall is another program like that that is a supportive living environment around other colleges with locations in um, Eugene, Oregon, Burlington, Vermont, and Madison, Wisconsin, three of the coolest small cities in the country, um, and so on. Um, so lots of different types of colleges out there, and that's why we're having this conversation today. Um, so my next comment, as we think about 
um, college match is the classic, well, I'm gonna go to Harvard answer that I often get from students um, when I ask them, well, where are you interested um, in attending college? And I often get the answer, well, Harvard, Harvard sounds good. Um, and I often think of that as shorthand for, I simply have no idea, but I've heard of Harvard. So let's go with that. I hear it's the best. Um, so we're gonna have a little talk about Harvard's admissions profile this year as a little lesson in um, what college is sort of looking like this year. Oh, where did this go? Here it is. Um, so this year, Harvard received, oops, I just lost that. Okay, 42,749 applications for the class entering in the fall of 2022. Um, so over 42,000 applications. Um, they admitted just 4.59% of those students um, per the Harvard Crimson, which is their um, magazine. So um, that is what's called in my field, um, an unpredictable college. It used to be called highly competitive or highly rejective, which I think is a terrible phrase. Um, but these are where you could have invented the cure to cancer and not get into Harvard. Um, that there are many unpredictable factors as they're building their class. The thing about Harvard is they know if they admit that student, the likelihood of that student enrolling at Harvard is extremely high, right? If you got admitted to Harvard and your family makes under $100,000 a year, you actually get full tuition and I believe room and board. So it's, it's a compelling admit, but it's not the right match for everyone. Most colleges cannot count on everybody they admit enrolling for a million different reasons. Um, but this year is the first year in history that Harvard had an admit rate under 5%. So, um, yeah, that's a lot. So anyhow, there's a data point for us to start with um, to give you a sense of a highly unpredictable college. Most colleges are not like that. There is an upper tier or echelon of colleges that are in that uh, stratospheric, highly rejective or highly unpredictable colleges. But, um, but that is um, the first thing you guys need to get. Um, so when we think about what really goes on in, oops, the college environment and college admissions offices, um, I want us to think about some other things. Um, college admissions offices want to make a good match because they want a student who they admit to enroll and then persist. That means graduate from their college because that's a good investment, right? Um, they've spent the money to try and recruit you. They've spent the money to convince you this is the right place to go. They've probably given you financial aid. And so they are going to be looking at your application, which we'll probably talk about next time in terms of um, what the common application is, what the coalition application is, what institutional applications are, how that differs from sometimes state colleges and community colleges um, and how to manage that. Um, but the things that make a college selective, and Houston, I saw your chat, and I'm going to comment on that in a couple seconds. Um, admissions considerations are going to vary from school to school, but they want to make sure there's a match. So if a student is interested in aerospace engineering, and they've applied to um, Kenyon College, a very small college known for its English department, um, and although they have science departments, maybe not so much their aerospace engineering, that may not be a good match. Um, another match that they might see is that aerospace engineering applicant having never taken algebra two. Probably not really an aerospace engineer, probably someone who thinks it's just super cool and hasn't connected um, some of the dots yet. Um, in terms of the skills that it takes to be an aerospace engineer. Other things that may make a college selective is size. Um, the University of Minnesota 
my my ginormous example, um, all 50,000 people there are not all undergraduates, students pursuing a bachelor's degree. Um, they have many, many people in master's programs and PhD programs, but um, they do have a very large freshman class, um, probably clipping up to several thousand. And so they, they have a lot more wiggle room to admit a broader range of kids um, that meet their general um, mission and goals and application standards. Um, okay, Donnie, you got a question in the cat, chat too. I, I saw that question too. Um, I'll pause here and answer your, your question, Houston, about Ivy League schools. Yes, they're all highly unpredictable. Any college that admits less than about 25% of its applicants is unpredictable. And while it may be a good match for you, you cannot count on that. And I would never advise a student to um, put their eggs in that basket, if you will, because it just doesn't matter how awesome you are, it, you may not get in. And, um, or you may not get financial aid if you do get in. So it's, it's a complex thing. We're not doing individual college counseling here, but it's, it's that in that echelon of colleges, um, it's just become in the last five years, a whole different beast. Um, Donnie, to your question about cited guides for college instructors, it's not about allowed or not allowed. It is not part of their job description. It's assumed that you have the skills to move around campus on your own volition um, and that you have the O&M skills. Um, and we will, if we have time next session, get into things to do once you are admitted to a college, but work on those O&M skills and your independence now would be a, a good a good goal to put for yourself no matter what. And while we're oh. paused, um, uh, Samarth, uh, Samarth um, has their oh, hand good. raised. Just wonder okay. if you want to take uh, their question real quick. Absolutely. Want to go ahead? Uh, is my microphone? You're good. Yeah, we can hear you loud and clear. Okay. I just wanted to ask because like I was 15 minutes late into the webinar. Uh, huh? Uh, how long will it take for the video recording to be on the website, like on the APS website? How long before it's available or how, or how long is it up there? How long until it's available? Usually within a week or less. And then once it's okay. up there, it'll stay up there. Okay, got it. Thanks. Okay, great. Awesome. Um, and um, Alexis, your question about what is the percentage of predictable and unpredictable colleges? Oh, I don't have that number, but there, um, I have a great website that I will put in um, our resources, um, if not for this lesson, for next lesson. Um, and if it comes to my brain, I'll say it out loud, but I'm, I'm not pulling it out of my brain right now. Um, that you can go on and you can see um, the percentage of students admitted, um, out of all applicants, there's a lot of careful nuance and guidance you need to read those statistics in a way that will serve um, you. And that's a very cryptic answer, I'm sorry. Uh, but um, there is a site um, that I can show you um, that will give you some of that data that you can begin to gain some, some good information from Alexis. So. Um, on that, I'm going to move us along. So admissions offices consider many of sort of what their goals are as a college or goals of individual programs like nursing program and engineering program, very competitive business programs or journalism programs can be even more competitive than the university overall. Um, also demographics come into play. Um, for a regional college, like here in Massachusetts, a regional college is one called Nichols College um, down in Dudley, Massachusetts. And um, it's a great little college with a nice business program, some nice athletics and so on, um, a lot of support. Um, but what we know about places like Nichols is in our demographic area, it's a regional college folks are, um, Folks are going um, to it from the Massachusetts and general New England area, not from outside that area for the most part. And the number of college students everywhere is declining um, because your demographic of high school age students 
is getting smaller over the last probably 10 years. That number's been declining. So they may be feeling a little desperate, quite frankly, to make sure they have enough kids to fill their class because those admissions offices are, you know, they have to get 200 students per class or 450 to make a college's budget work. So it, they get some pressure that way too, that can sometimes serve you. Um, and the other thing that admissions considerations sometimes make them, un, you know, mysterious sometimes is, you know, what is the buzz about a certain school um, or about a certain major at a school? Um, Boston College is a college, again, here in Massachusetts, it's got a lot of buzz, it's got a certain vibe that a lot of students are really drawn to highly selective, if not unpredictable. Um, and it's it's not a great match for everybody. It, it has a lot of great academics, but it's got a very distinct culture that is awesome for some students and maybe not as appealing for others. And But there's a lot of buzz about it. So um, everybody's different. Other admissions considerations. Oh, we're finally getting to academics. What is your curriculum? They're gonna look at your transcript. They're gonna look at the rigor of your courses. And what I mean by that is um, the standard college prep high school curriculum is four years of English, three to four years of math. I strongly recommend four if you're considering any kind of competitive college and just to be prepared. And that means through algebra two minimally, preferably through um, some pre-calc of some sort. If you're interested in the sciences, STEM programs, engineering, anything like that, um, you're gonna need through probably AP, Calc, A, B, or B, C um, is a general standard, if not straight up calculus for more rigorous or highly selective colleges, it's gonna be Calc, A, B, or B, C is what you're gonna need to look for if your college off, if your high school offers it. Um, that's what I mean by rigor. Um, the competitive colleges out there are looking at you taking the most rigorous courses available at your high school. Um, they have a something called a um, school profile in most cases that describes the, the range of courses available, the number of AP courses and, and so on. So they have some context for reading your transcript. Um, uh, let's see other things, three years of lab science, biology, chemistry, and physics, um, and two years of world language minimally. Um, more if you're looking at these highly selective colleges and so on. And I say that not to all of this, not to freak you out because I suspect there may be some of you on this call who may not be on, on the path to um, acquiring that set curriculum. But for the, those of you who are younger um, and um, what I'd like to do is um, Sorry, I just paused for a moment. Um, what I want you to do is start planning out what your academics look like and how you can keep in rigorous courses that challenge you from a thinking standpoint, from a production of homework standpoint, um, and an engagement in class standpoint. Those are all gonna help build your brain to think in more um, insightful ways, in more critical thinking type ways. That's the type of thinking that college is going to be asking you to do. And if you don't have that practice in high school, the leap to college can be more of a stretch. Um, when I described, um, there are definitely colleges out there and paths out there for students on many different academic paths right now in high school. Um, and there's also really one of my loves of community colleges uh, is that they have wonderful courses that build up some of the coursework maybe you weren't able to get in high school, particularly in math for many students and um, in critical reading and writing. Um, sometimes you, you have to take some courses to kind of get your skills up um, and community colleges are really um, a good way of doing that. Uh, so um, in more competitive colleges, they are looking at curriculum and rigor, GPA and class rank in some cases. These can all be highly misleading um, to colleges about what your skills are. We'll talk about that issue in a minute, but this is what colleges look at. Um, there's a whole thing around standardized test scores right now. The SAT and the ACT for many, many years have been in this field for 
35 years. Um, the, the scene has changed a lot right now. Um, the SAT and the ACT are um, still the nationwide standardized tests, but increasingly colleges are moving to either test optional approaches to their admission consideration, where you're not required to submit them anymore, or test blind, which means they don't look at all at those scores ever. And so, um, so they're really looking at how you're presenting yourself in these more competitive colleges, um, how you're presenting yourself um, through your transcript, the curriculum that you've taken, areas of interest matched with the college, and so on. Um, so um, there is a, a website called fairtest.org, F-A-I-R-T-E-S-T.org, I believe. And um, that is a, a place that's been advocating for the elimination of standardized tests in the college process for many years. It creates significant um, inequities in terms of access to college. Um, I am definitely a fan of their approach. Um, and I know that it definitely does not demonstrate the skills of many of our students with um, blindness and low vision because it, it um, is a very biased test for a billion and a half reasons. Um, and is often difficult to secure even an appropriate testing environment. So um, if you have questions about that, feel free to ask, but it's, it's um, one that isn't as necessary to um, stress about like you used to have to, which I am super happy to say because it was a big thing for a really long time. Um, so anyhow, other things they look at, extracurricular involvement. Are you involved in your high school? What do you do when you're not in school? Um, for a selective college, they're gonna be looking at that, trying to understand what it is that, that you're doing now to engage in the world, to fill your time. Um, there's, there's a wide range of ways that students can demonstrate this. Um, for some students I know, they are required to support their family at home by watching younger children, supporting a grandparent, doing um, supporting running the house. Um, for other students, they may have athletic commitments. For other students, they may have um, skills they may be working on, whether it's horseback riding or some sort of athletic pursuit or swimming or um, working with their local church or a million other things, or it may be involvement in school, uh, a leadership role, um, uh, managing a team, um, I'm making up all the millions of things I've seen come across my desk over the years. Um, but those things help a college understand things that are meaningful to you, that you want to invest your time in. Um, and in, if you choose to, and we will talk about this next time, disclose in the process of applying to college that you have a visual impairment, if you choose to add to your list of activities, some of the enrichment programs you've participated in, whether they be a weekend program or a summer six week program um, or the program I run, which is Compass, which is a nine month program. Those are things that demonstrate things that are meaningful to you, that are filling your time, that are expanding your world. And those are things you can also list on a, a college application to let them know that you're engaging, you're learning, you're moving yourself forward. Um, Finally, another thing to consider, colleges don't consider this, but this is something for you to consider, is the cost of a college and the balance of financial aid. And that awesome website, I'm trying to remember the name of right now, will give you um, some really marvelous usable data about what is the actual cost of the college, how much financial aid is given out each year, what percentage of students admitted or are given financial aid, um, what, is the, what is the amount of debt that students graduate with, which is a real thing that you cannot ignore. Um, and so, um, so those are a few things to consider there. Let me see where I am in my conversation. Okay, so now we're gonna move into a couple of other pieces I've alluded to about kind of your readiness, that things that are going to contribute to making your own match, okay? And I'm gonna pause briefly before I do that transition, check my chat. Why do, the, why do you have to apply, apply to college? Donnie, that is something for you to talk to with, with your parents about or your TBI. 
Um, you, you don't have to if you don't want to. Um, so, okay, I'm gonna move on. So the next topic I wanna talk about is independence and what that means to you. And I'd love for you guys, it's another chat opportunity or raise your hand opportunity to tell me what does independence mean to you? Independence in the here and now, right now, for you in this moment in time, not like five years from now, but in your skills and your act, you know, your tasks of daily living today. So who has something they want to say? Donnie says, doing stuff on your own. Yeah, that means like if you're uh, walking down a sidewalk, not with your friend or your mom right next to you, but like no one around. Being on your own, Alexis, learning something. Yeah, absolutely. Who else has something to contribute? Houston does, but he raised his hand a minute ago. So I'm not sure if it's specifically related to what you're saying now, but do you okay. want to try Houston? Oh. I just want to say, I think, I feel like he does it. This is very for like school to school because I know my school does it, but I know there are some schools that actually let you take like college classes in high school. Yeah. Is that a, isn't that a, yeah, that's a big thing nationally right now. And um, it's one of the ways, oh, technically, yeah. like, like CCP. Because, like, always, like, I'm a sophomore and now I don't, I don't think I plan on doing that in junior or senior year, but yeah, you know. there's pros and cons to that. And I, you know, Again, another rabbit hole. I would be happy to walk down with you sometime. Um, there are pros and cons to that, um, but yes, <laughs> those are definitely there. That's that's taking those courses in some cases can be a sign of independence. As I'm trying to, I'm going to bring the conversation back to that. But I'm glad you raised that, Houston. Yeah, um, I, I think I have like a, a friend or two that I think yeah. are doing some, but I don't know. Um. Yeah, I'm gonna. Can I put that over here on the side for a few minutes, Houston? Yeah, I just, I, 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 I just, I just thought I'd bring that up. There. Oh, I'm glad you did. I, I, you know, that hadn't been in my brain as a thing to talk about, but it's, it's a definitely a huge thing nationally. Um, a couple other folks have contributed. Independence means not having to rely on people all the time. Yeah. Um, Sean says being able to advocate for your needs and knowing when to do so. Ooh, I like that. That's got some, some nice nuance to it. And, and recognizing your needs is the first step in being able to then advocate for your needs and, and knowing that they're, they're legitimate, you know, that they're things that you need help with or you need clarification on or what, whatever the thing is um, and knowing when to do so, that's great. Um, those are all definitely things of independence. A thing I think of when I raise it, and I, I wonder what you guys think of this, or I want you to ponder this, is the idea of doing things on your own um, without a paraprofessional sitting next to you, without a parent you know, going in and saying, remember to say this, Leslie. Um, that's kind of what, we're, what I want you to begin to envision working yourself towards is um, that big shift from high school to college is one that is a huge shift in the expectation of independence and self-reliance. And what I call a locus of control, moving from adults being responsible to make sure you get through high school, you know, uh, officially, you have to do the work. Um, but there's often adults there supporting you or saying, hey, Leslie, have you done your homework yet? Um, that stuff kind of goes away when you go to college. And um, the leap to that independence can be quite a shock to the system for a lot of students. And, um, and it's something um, I alluded to with the difference between the IDEA and the ADA. That's kind of what I'm talking about here. And we'll definitely talk about that next session. Um, Houston takes that and extends this a little more, being on your own and knowing how to need less help and asking for it if you really need it. Problem solving. That's a great concept to add to this. Problem solving. Um, not just assuming someone else is going to figure it out, but solving the problem on your own. Um, that's a great contribution to that. So I'm going to put a concept out to you guys called college acceptance versus college readiness. And I'm looking at the clock, slightly freaking out, but that's okay. We're going to move through this and I'm going to plant this seed to you. Uh, and this is a this is a tough seed, okay? This is a tough idea. 
there you may be acceptable to college because you're in college prep courses, but you may not be ready for colleges. And there's a whole field of research on this. Um, the considerations for college readiness um, are complex. Um, and it's in one of the reasons I run the program I run is because we know that students aspire to attend college with a vision impairment as you should. Um, but we know that over 60% of students who attempt college with a vision impairment do not complete college for a gargantuan range of reasons. Um, but some of them have to do with things like misleading transcripts, grades that do not represent work that is comparable to other students in your class, significant gaps in skills and training, such as orientation and mobility, which we know is often underserved in the high school experience. Um, little experience with independence or self-advocacy -advoc because of designs within schools um, to make sure you get through the program, but not have the chance to make your own mistakes and figure out how to recover, feel the icky part of recovery and write yourself and move forward, problem solve as Houston suggested. Um, and so I put this out there out of respect to you guys um, that you, I want you to think about this. This is hard stuff. Um, but you're here on this call because you care and you're motivated. And um, I want to help you think through some of these things. Um, you're, you're learning how to do a whole lot of extra things. A lot of students don't have to learn. And I, I have a great deal of um, humility in the face of the tasks you have on your plate. And I want to think about lifting you up and holding the bar high for you guys so that you're college ready um, as well as accepted. So with that, we're going to move on to finding your college match. Um, and I'm going to give you a few things to consider um, and tools that may already exist in your world. 648, we've got 12 minutes. I can crank through a bunch of these things. We got this. So um, this slide has a whole pile of information on it. You will, um, the, it will be downloaded as a, um, I think a PowerPoint. So you'll be able to access this. Um, it's also a Google slide. Um, there's opportunities to learn about yourself um, within Naviance. If your school has Naviance, they have a wonderful personality inventory system built into it. I encourage you to ask your guidance counselor about it. Your TVI is not gonna know about that. Um, a website called Niche, N-I-C-H-E, has um, a wonderful search tool. I cannot attest to its accessibility currently. It worked effectively for my college success kids a few years ago, um, but folks are always updating and changing websites and I cannot keep up. Another um, system that some schools use for college search is called SCORE, S-C-I-O-R. Again, your guidance office would introduce you to that. Um, and that's how you would keep track of the colleges you're applying to, all sorts of stuff your, your guidance office would use. If, if your guidance office is focused on um, helping students who want to attend college. Um, a website called Big Future that is part of the College Board. And again, I'm gonna have a resource list of all this stuff, so don't freak out about writing this all down. Um, has some really nice information, tons and tons of information on it. Um, and uh, that may be a useful tool as well. Um, and then a, a website called the National Association of College Admissions Counselors, which is for people like me. Um, but it has a lot of nice resources on its site too, um, helping get you connected to um, virtual college tours, um, to a whole new thing they've just rolled out with tons and tons of college guidance right on their site for free. Um, and so I highly recommend that you check out some of those sites. Um, especially if you don't have robust services at your school or they're just, they're, they're just too maxed out and they really can't give you the one-on-one -on -one work. There's tons of really good resources out there. I want you to consider um, and ask your family what the family resources are available to meet the colleges as well as your Commission for the Blind's policy on supporting college. How many credits do you need to receive funding from your commission? Um, what GPA do you have to maintain to remain funded through the commission? Do they pay for books? Do they provide you laptops um, and so on? And how do they provide training for those laptops? Um, another thing I want you to consider um, before you go, you know, saying I wanna to go to Harvard or anything else, 
Why am I doing this? Um, why am I thinking I want to attend college? Do I love to learn? Do I just love to learn things? Do I want to learn more about the world and ways of thinking and ways people across the world think and everything? College may be a really good match for you then if you have that passion. Um, if you are very clear, I, this is what I want to be and do, and I'm moving myself ahead in my skills, being a, um, a TVI, I want to be a teacher, I want to be a lawyer, I want to be um, work in the field of sociology. I've heard, this is my, my favorite um, career exploration story, um, a student who discovered that there's a whole field of um, hospitality, um, hotel management, and event planning, and you can major in it, and that is super cool. Um, it's actually a really fun major. It's often part of a business school. Um, that's a very specific professional goal. Um, physical therapy falls in that. Nursing falls in that. Um, computer science falls in that and so on. That would be a transactional reason for going to college. I'm going there to get the professional skills so I can get a job. Um, curiosity is more aligned with a liberal arts model of I want to go explore a lot of things and I'm going to figure out what I'm going to major in. Believe it or not, I majored in history and I am still a super proud history major and I use those skills every single day in my job of critical thinking, critical reading, critical writing, analysis, evaluation, and so on. Um, so for me, a history major was a great place to start. Um, and then I took it to my master's degree. So these are all get to know yourself first questions that are gonna to begin to inform how you answer all the other questions. Some of the characteristics I described earlier, check in the time, um, as well as other issues that may impact your college search. Your current skills, both academically and in terms of blindness skills, how independently are you doing your homework? What is your stamina for reading? Can you read 50 to 100 pages a week by yourself effectively while taking notes? Are you able to write an eight page paper by yourself properly formatted, possibly with some cited um, formatting and support at the very end? Are you able to plan, do the research, organize, write, and produce? This is what college is assuming you know how to do. In terms of blindness skills, are you able to navigate a campus independently? Um, or is there a good reason why you can't besides not having those skills developed yet? Um, I could go on and on. Typing skills is a big one. Um, skills using and navigating complex websites independently um, and problem solving your way through them and on and on. Um, career awareness. Um, I alluded to a couple quizzes available in Naviance, one of the college resources that some schools use. Um, I can add a couple other ones, but you know, asking your guidance office or your TVI or your VR counselor actually has a, should have a lot of good career exploration um, quizzes, programs, assessments that could help you go, okay, well, I love talking to people and I really don't like to pay attention to details. And they tell me I could sell snow to an Eskimo. Um, what do you think I should major in? Um, that's a fair question. Um, think about the things you're great at that you enjoy doing that bring you joy um, or that you get a lot of feedback that you're very effective at um, and begin to connect that to areas out there that may be um, looking for those skills. Uh, hospitality, my standard example tonight, could be usable working for um, the Boston Celtics running events and hosting special events that are important to the Celtics for fundraising, for community engagement, and so on. So you could combine a love of major league, or not major league basketball, NBA National Basketball Association, call it caliber basketball, with your desire to organize things and being really good at that. Um, so there, there are many ways of combining that. You need to think about um, what the core program in an academic program at your college is. Um, generally, colleges have general college requirements you need to study that may or may not be in an area of interest for you. Things like um, uh, world history, I, I could go on and on, they, everyone looks different, 
about a third of your courses are in your major, sometimes a little more, and about a third of your courses-ish um, are area are elective courses. Um, that's a general breakdown for an associate's or a bachelor's degree. Um, you need to be able to meet the academic standards to graduate with that degree. And there's often quantitative or math requirements as well as writing uh, requirements to meet those um, that degree requirements. So what does that look like? Um, and how do you um, make sure you have the skills to meet those requirements uh, and the desire to study a wide range of things that most colleges do require? What is the culture and community? We've alluded to some of that. If you are um, into um, dif disability advocacy and um, being a participant and an advocate, there are a growing number of disability centers in colleges. Uh, University of Arizona has a great one in Tucson that really speaks about the disability culture on their campus. Um, additionally, what is the disability service office like? Do they have a dedicated assistive tech person? Um, do they have experience working with a student with your vision profile and or secondary um, diagnosis profile such as autism or a learning disability uh, or a mobility issue, a health condition and so on? Um, what is the campus layout and complexity? We talked a little bit about that. Is it a primarily day school? Is it a primarily residential school? Which one feels right to you for the first you know, time out of the gate? And what is the competitiveness of it? We saw Harvard as a super, you know, super terrestrial, crazy, um, unpredictable college. Um, there's lots of colleges that admit more than 25% of the applicants. Um, those are the ones to maybe mostly look at. Um, and if you don't know, ask your family or your O&M instructor to go visit a few local colleges, even if you know you're not going to go to them. Get your body on the campus, feel the buzz on campus, go to the bookstore, go to the coffee shop, feel the conversations around you, feel the energy in the hallway. Um, you know, are people chit-chatting around? Is there a positive vibe? Are people helpful? Um, will they answer some questions and so on? Um, your gut is gonna tell you the right answer. And I'm here to tell you, worked with over 6,000 kids in my college, days, every, every student's different and their response to each school is different, but you can't know till you get your body on a campus. So um, that is that. Um, I've talked about core curriculum, a key thing here. Um, make sure they have majors that might be interesting to you if you decide to apply. Um, and, and I'm gonna answer some of these chat things in just a moment, I have one minute. And I'm gonna pause here. And I'll put these other ones in the next conversation. And I'm going to answer these chats real quick before um, Scott makes me be quiet. Um, so being, um, being on your own. So Morgan asks, even can you get connected with a VR counselor? So um, Morgan, I'm not exactly sure what you're asking, but what I'd encourage you to do is talk with your TBI or your parents um, about how to get connected with a VR counselor if you don't have one. Um, they're someone who would be working with your state commission for or voc rehab, depending on how the state manages it. Oh, when do you get connected? When you turn 14, well, you should be connected now, but when you turn 14 to 16, each state is supposed to help you begin to create a transition plan. And that means a transition out of high school into work and college. And your VR counselor is the person, one of the people who's supposed to help create that plan. Um, and so your TVI and your VR counselor, or your TVI should help you begin to figure out what the rules are in your state, Morgan. Um, and then Alexis, do you know if um, BSPP provides real books? College provide them. Um, college DSOs are provided to deliver your course materials in the accessible format you request. That may be in braille, digital braille, it may be in large print, it may be in auditor, you know, audiobooks. Um, it just it just depends. And these are questions um, a whole nother series could unpack, but we do have some articles in our college readiness resource. Um, if you go to um, www.perkins.org, I do not have the capacity to drop it in the chat box right now. 
um, but um, the College Readiness Resource Center on Perkins.org um, has a whole pile of articles. Just go to the student section. And if you do your extension assignment, that literally is what I tell you to do um, or ask you to do or suggest that you do. So if you take the extension assignment for this lesson that I'm gonna be pulled off of any second now, um, that has the link to the College Readiness Resource Center that has piles and piles of articles on almost everything I've talked about today and a whole lot on engaging with DSOs, questions to ask. DSOs means Disability Service Office um, and how to begin to think about that. It is very different than high school. Um, and so with that, I'm going to pause um, and say that next session, let me go to my next session slide here. Um, is we're gonna explore how to choose a major and other important questions. Um, because it, it's often a question we can ask. We can toss in some questions about accommodations in the disability service office um, and whether or not to disclose um, as a few, other, um, a few other topics for next session. And with that, Scott, thank you for letting me go two minutes over. Oh, you are so welcome. We need more time, Leslie. This was too <laughs> short actually. So. Um, we'll have to make this a lot longer next time, but really, really looking forward to two weeks from today, um, because then you'll, you will be back. And again, you'll yep. be doing um, the session on how to choose a major and some other important questions. I had hoped this was going to go on a little bit longer, but time <laughs> has gotten away from us. So thank you, everyone. Um, and also check the Excel Academy Web page. The if you just Google APH Excel Academy, um, you should find the handouts for this session and for the previous session as well. So again, Leslie, thank you so much, and thank you everyone for joining us. And we so look forward to seeing all of you in exactly two weeks minus one hour. So awesome. thank you so much, <laughs> and you all have a wonderful evening. All right. Bye bye. Bye.